We're doing a dungeon coach breakdown. This series, y'all, I'm so excited to start this series. I'm the dungeon coach, so I feel like this film breakdown series of a bunch of different D&D live play games is exactly <laughs> what I've been meant to do. We're going to learn from all these players. Imagine this is literally like professional players. It'd be like me doing a professional football basketball game breakdowns of the best of the best. And what can we learn from them? What things happen in these weird situations that we can take the pros and take the cons of, see what we can learn from these weird things. Nobody talks about these little moments. They happen all the time at our game tables and they happen all the time at these game tables. They happen all over the place. And just purely talking about these interesting little spots here that I've picked out from Exandria Unlimited, which is the first thing that I'm starting here. And I wanna know from you guys, what clips, what episodes do you want me to do these breakdowns on? However well these do, I could see these videos being a complete staple of the channel, but that's based on you guys. Like, comment, whatever, let me know. But I'm going to start off with Critical Role because they are the literal uh, top of the top as far as uh, how many people see this and the, the quality of professional, all this kind of stuff. They are the most well-known, so I might as well start there and then see where I go from there. I would love to see if these some gems that you guys have. Let me know. Comments down below. I want to celebrate the successes of these really cool things that happen that you can take and learn from for your table whether you're a player or a dungeon master they'll be literally both here i want to talk about and learn from everything in these clips not just the good not just the bad i'm going to have a mix of everything because you do learn the most from mistakes you make and i'm not trying to say that anything here is a mistake because dungeons and dragons is not like that there's a lot of learning opportunities that made you can have something where ooh, maybe this could be done there maybe that could be done there because there's certain times at the game table that you know we've all had these experiences where it just feels a little off or like ooh, maybe this could have happened or uh new players learning the game which is another reason why i'm choosing exandria unlimited because we have two brand new players that make amazing amazing moves so to get into these players real quick look at this huh i'm, I'm like in it uh, you have Liam and Ashley who are both players of the actual main Critical Role actual seasons. This is a shorter season. It's only about eight episodes, I think, which is a whole other thing we can dive into, talking about the different changes you would make if you're doing a one-shot versus an eight-shot versus a full campaign. Then you have two brand new players of Robbie and Amy who have not played Dungeons & Dragons before. All of them are all professional actors in some sort of capacity, voice acting or physical. But uh, it's so cool to see them take risks, make decisions, and how the whole dynamic of that all play together. There's so many great moves that everyone makes, including these two brand new players. But I love that there's brand new players here because there's lots of things to learn from. How DMs can handle new players and, and teach them the game. How players can interact with each other and help foster role play to be able to bring each other out of their shells, especially for new players. And some veteran players here at the table, which... I haven't left out. Don't worry, I didn't forget. Matt Mercer also playing as a player, which is really cool to see. Lots of really cool stuff that you've seen him behind the screen for this whole time. But there's a lot of really cool moves and really cool things that they, that he does, as long as all of them that they do, that have a little bit more implications behind it, whether it's on purpose or on accident. I want to break all those down. And then you have the new Dungeon Master of Critical Role, Abria Iyengar, which, oh my gosh, let me let me get it, let me get back here. Stepping into the shoes of Dungeon Master on Critical Role after two full seasons that last years, stepping into Matt Mercer's world that he created as he's a player in, that's insane, and Abria, that is impressive, impressive. She does have hundreds, maybe thousands of DM sessions that she's streamed on all the different social media, so she is extremely a professional here. So I would love to break down some of the stuff and decisions that she makes, and I have taken so many notes that I'm going to take and put into my games too. So let's get into it. Time out. I really want to make sure that we're on the same page. I am not going to be hypercritical. Uh, critical role. Thing, sort of, okay. I'm not trying to break it down and say like, oh, they broke the rules here. I, that's not at all. Well, I am the, I'm super <laughs> homebrew centric and all that kind of stuff. I'm looking for the different moves and different subtleties that normally you don't get to talk about. And I'm not saying that I am better by any means. Abria has played 10 times more as far as dungeon mastering. Uh, a lot of the players at this table have been a player far more than I have. I am just offering up my opinion and trying to spark some creative, cool conversations about different ways to handle a lot of these situations. One of the situations we're going to get into is really interesting. There's a lot of different ways we could do it, and I want to have those open conversations. This is not something critical. I'm not getting a magnifying glass out here. I am super excited. This was an awesome episode. Super excited to see where this whole thing goes, and then to see where it goes from there, and what other episodes you have to share with me also. So, now let's go. First thing we're breaking down here is a next level DM move from Abria of how she's starting the actual game. This is There's so many times whenever Dungeon Masters are first starting a game and players are about to start playing a game and there's this 
not necessarily awkward moment, but everyone's like, how do we start this game? Like, how is it going to go? Let's get going. But then how do you get going? There's lots of different ways to start a campaign. I've done a whole video of it. different ways to start your campaign. This is something I have never seen before and is super awesome. And all she does is ask a very simple question. But let's find out. Orem of the Arishari, where are you? I've already been up for uh, 30 minutes. Boom, there you go. Yeah, I'm back. Where are you? That's such a very open, interesting way to start off a campaign. She says, where are you? She goes through all five of the players and just simply asks, where are you? After doing some sort of exposition and explaining in the setting and all that kind of stuff, very beautifully done. How amazing is that to give players the creative freedom to just say where they are? They don't have to like worry about all the different things like, okay, so I'm gonna, where am I gonna, like they get to just talk. They get to talk and say what they're doing and give a little bit of flavor of their character. And I guarantee you, I don't know this, I'm, I'm speculating here, but I'm pretty sure Abria had to tell them all beforehand, I'm gonna ask you, where are you? And just have something, that's it. That's it, that's all they do, and they can just describe whatever they want, and that gives them the power to enter into this world, and whether you're this the first time playing at the table, sometimes you haven't played with each other, or you're introducing this to hundreds of thousands of people, but you get to say and give the players the freedom to be able to say what they want to do there and set the tone and dive into the character, make it a little bit easier. Now, the second thing in this campaign opener is each player also gets around. It's also very cool. It's, they all have very similar type of structure to what happens. They have some sort of intro. They talk about where they are and what they're doing. They get to interact with some stuff. And then there's a check that's made. Liam describes some things. And then she said, make a perception check for me. He makes a perception check and then we get to see just a little bit of flavor of what happens, right? So I'm sure there was some sort of thing that Abria had planned out for each of these five players, right? Each of these five players had some sort of setting that she asked to them beforehand. Again, this is speculation. And they kind of said what they were going to do. And then Abria thought about what would happen and what kind of cool little different thing could maybe lead them together or whatever. And then there's going to be some check of some kind. And as the dungeon master, you wait and see what they do and what they describe. And then he described looking at something. So it's a perception check. Maybe he described messing with something a dexter sneaking around stealth and whatever the check is have there be a check and that puts the flavor spin on whatever's happening and so that now the players are rolling dice and they all get to roll their dice in their little scenes that they each had whenever she went around and said where are you and real quick of course there's going to be spoilers ahead for the first part of the episode i'm only doing the first two hours of the first episode of Xandria unlimited but there's going to be some spoilers in here. Nothing big story arch. I'm not going to say anything else. I've only seen this first episode. I'm about to watch the second episode. And if you guys want to see the part two of this, I would love to do part two of this. And if this does become a thing you want me to always do, Xandria Unlimited, we could do that or whatever else. But uh, there are going to be spoilers for the first half of this but nothing big and overarching. It's all going to be contained here. And really, honestly, it's nothing that's going to be too crazy, especially because it's only the first half and all the juicy stuff happened in the second half. Okay. Also, I want to stop and say this here too. When Liam was describing what he was doing, he's walking around, he said he's going to walk back and meet up with everybody. She asked him to make a perception check. Now, there's a time in Dungeon Masters asking for perception checks when a player is not saying they're actively looking for something and then it could be something where, oh, you just asked for perception checks too much. That was a mistake I made all the time as an early D Dungeon Master. I love the application of it here though because it sets the tone as that, I'm going to call it a flavor roll for this intro little thing that they're going to go around to all five players and they each do something. And there wasn't really anything over the top where Liam was saying something specific to ask for a check for, but there's some it's the abria had something before that scene and it, let's have the flavor of that roll see what happens let's see this perception roll yeah honestly you could totally have it be just you roll a d20 and then see how high or low it goes and have stuff prepared for whatever things can go wrong there but it's just a really cool way to do it flavor wise so i totally see a, a cool random ask for a perception check being what he sees on the way back to me with his friends uh go ahead and make a performance check for me <clears throat> Ooh, there it is performance check props for asking for performance Ooh love performance checks 15. so this is perfect there's a a performance check asked for they roll the performance check now what variants could be in that performance check this is the flavor roll that i'm kind of talking about here it's it, now if it's super low and they could describe something funny super high and they're just amazing and playing the flute but it's just you, she beautifully goes right into tying back to the backstory of like they had this party where they all met together and all this other kind of stuff to take all of these different little five people doing their own individual things of where are you and they can freely say what they're doing but abria knows that where they are and to kind of try and bring them back together and the role kind of helps do that it's a 14 i don't know what she would have said if they said a nine or if it was a 17 or whatever but either way you can help these roles start to lead everybody back together okay now it's ashley's turn and we have some interesting stuff here abria just did the probably the best description of an animal companion familiar type this fire monkey uh that she just did and now here's what happens isn't it just so tasty 
<laughs> I get I've already seen this and I'm still laughing at that. Perfect impression right there. Nice. Give him a little scrooch under his chin. <laughs> and uh, heartened by that, since you only give praise, he just starts absolutely like tearing down these like okay, beautiful. Well, let's plants. not get carried away. Yes, I love this so much, so much, so much. The this the the calling your players out on how they did. They, the monkey just did something and vandalized some flowers flowers and then you're like, oh good job and since you only gave praise uh, th that little phrase right there is so awesome and huge for dungeon masters to give out so that it's they can see and know what actions are being tied to the the repercussions of this monkey going on a rampage which leads to some more stuff right here hey. ah! and just starts jamming him into his mouth oh. uh make a perception check for me okay so now here's getting into some interesting thing and i think this would have to do with the flavor rolls is Ask for a perception check when there's not really a time of anything that's needing to be perceived right now, but like what's about to happen? Let's see. Because this little dude is not the vibe of the street right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. 16. Yeah, with a 16, uh, you hear around the corner, like the door uh, suddenly like swings open and this woman looks out the side and you see Mr. like stop jamming plants into his mouth. Mm -hmm look over, he like leans back, looks over at the woman and just grins and screams as she begins like yelling at you. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you? Um, oh, excuse I me, so I've been working very hard on those plants, what are you? So this ask for a perception check is a little bit different. I think that personally, this is the, the dungeon master looking for some type of way to look for that check to kind of reflavor what, where this scene is going because it's it goes in an amazing direction. I really love this whole monkey plant vandalism thing. Uh, but the perception check, I don't know what would have happened if it was low or high. The perception check led to seeing somebody come out of their house. So in this scenario, I think in a perception check of like, oh, make a perception check for something that needs to happen. And we'll talk about this more in a second, but like you don't want to have your perception checks or investigation checks gate and bar off what happens next because it, let's say it was a nat one. Well, would the person still come out of the house because they're being, they're vandalizing the plants. And I'm clarifying, this is not what I'm saying should happen. What happened was hilarious, but I'm saying these perception chat, this scenario, I would just have it lead to the person coming out of the house. Oh my God, the monkey, like that's a great scene. I would hate to have the role be low and then not have the scene that follows happen. So the monkey vandalizes something and then you just, I'd go right into saying the person comes out of the house and now all this stuff's happening and then see what kind of check happens there for this flavor check that we're looking for. I, I, Why is he laughing at It's me? fine, I, I can fix them for you um what okay i'll just um here it comes I will... druid craft okay. there's some the, of the flowers back that he ate um okay <laughs> <laughs> you say that to her she's very confused and stressed out go ahead uh yeah there's no role associated with druid craft so what do you do Same. so now this is the that's the example here and again i'm trying to say here guys it's this i love what happened i love the direction it went in but this is now kind of the reflavoring of like there was a perception check made for something that never just ended up being a person coming out of their house and oh the monkey right and now they want a druid craft and yes i know cantrips are perfect and all stuff but this flavor this is the flavor role this isn't can she not do it or not this is where the flavor comes in of being a, ha, tying the role to something that the player's doing and it's something of how well the player did, just like the performance check, just like all these other things about how well did they do this thing, right? And then later on, there's a ch ask for a nature check. Let's see if we can find that. So it actually wasn't in this scene. It was later whenever Matt's character cast the light cantrip and she asked him to make an arcana check for it to see how well it goes. I do that stuff all the time and that's great. Abria does it there, but this is the time where I would say a druid craft situation going on. Like these are the cool moments to see. Like now Ashley had a great, awesome description of this fire druid and I just think that's such an awesome thing anyway. But um, the, the role there, and you know, of course you, you it's gonna happen. It's not like, you know, now if you have a natural one, that'd be super great and she starts a little more fire. Oh God, you know? <laughs> but those are the cool moments where it's gonna be a lot more fun to play around with what the play doing than this perception check to see the person so um this how well does her thing go she can then describe how either crazy beautiful the flame is because it's connected to a role instead of the druid craft cantrip being this awesome display of something tie it to a role and see how awesome that is but again props to abria here for this really cool way of doing these things that each of the players are going through here we've gone through three of them so far and they have some sort of cool thing that they get to interact with and now there's the the tone has been set for her character and mister her little pet, pet fire monkey and all of this stuff is now that i feel more connected to the characters i get a better sense of them they've acted independently so then you can bring them together that is a brilliant move let's go to the next one okay dairy axe hmm. where are you
love it. There it is again. Dariax, where are you? And then give the reins to Matt, and here he goes. I, uh, I'm heavily snoring currently uh, <laughs> before something catches in the sinuses and begin to toss awake, and you see perched at the edge of a roof, <laughs> one arm dangling off the side. A history check. Uh, that is a dirty one. <laughs> oh, oh. Thanks. You do not, and we move forward with the story. Okay, yeah, checks out. Checks out. <laughs> what a great way to handle a natural one. You know nothing, and we move on with like the, those are really cool moments where it's you know you can say something that as the dungeon master. All right, the story continues, <laughs> but then Matt does something with this as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what he does think is like, shit, where'd my spear go? And he just starts looking for his spear, which he doesn't know where it is. Right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's cool to have the the dungeon master had, a, had a, took it in a direction where do where do you go with natural ones? A bunch of different ways to handle natural ones. So the dungeon master moved forward with it. Said, "Oh, this is the story continues. Funny moment. Everybody laughs, and you continue on." But another cool thing for players to do is take those natural ones, take the reins, and take control of your natural ones, and explain it through your character. Be like, actually, <laughs> just and. Then, now it's further character development for that character of why it was a natural one because it doesn't remember because this crazy part has happened and it all ties into the big picture. Love it. We just say it all the time when things just don't make sense. Are time you, is a weird are, soup. Are you lying right now? Of course not. I need you to make either a persuasion or deception check. Ooh, see, persuasion or deception. You have her being able to make the role, and she gets to make the role persuasion or deception, kind of see what's going on. There's some stuff going on that maybe, is she lying or not? We don't know. The rest of the players don't know. He's going to make an uh, insight check, and then you can find out based on the results. And you, as a from a meta level, you're going to say the number. They'll say the number, and you know who wins. So there's already some meta stuff going on there. But this goes one step further than that. But you have to tell us which, which it is. Um, um, Ooh. Um. But you have to tell us what it is. So that's interesting. And this is a choice. You know what I'm saying? This is not anything good or bad. This is a choice of what you would do at the table. How you want to run this. Are you, are you okay with players keeping secrets from each other at the table? A lot of players, a lot of DMs I've talked with, there is no secrets at the table whatsoever. Especially things where like someone's uh, posing as a different class. What they are. That's a that's a whole other <laughs> thing but uh it's really interesting abria wants to have it a much more open vibe at the table i see it love it i get it you know and there's a lot of different ways you can go with that and that's kind of another conversation of do you want to have it be where they make a persuasion or deception but they don't say which one it is i don't know and then depending on the role you might not know or not so i think there's a lot of interesting uh opportunities there but i think that the vibe you're going for at the table really really matters for that because time is a, it it's real good to know yeah <laughs> But it is good to know because that's another direction that you say. Whenever you make them say it, now the whole th the whole table kind of understands where that player is coming from. Yes, you have more meta knowledge than you would have beforehand, and there's the more secretive route would have been the like, ooh more of a mystery. But the table's more on the same page now. They kind of get a better sense of her character. So I see it both ways. Fern, can you make a wisdom saving throw for me? <laughs> Going off the rail. <laughs> yeah, we yep. didn't start on the rails. You're yeah. good. Feels like feels like a D and D game. Yeah. <laughs> so. Eight. Who? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good reaction. The impartial voice of God. Who? <laughs> Who? Connectivity, but you quickly lose the thread of it. Hmm. That was weird. You okay? Make a wisdom saving throw for me, Dorian. <clears throat> That's for like putting stuff together. Just mm -hmm. There we go. So she's asking them now for wisdom saving throws. This gets to a spot where, man, I empathize uh, with her so much. The players are going through all these different things and they're doing all these, but like they have something that, like, there's a story that's been prepared. There's something that's going to happen. There's all the stuff that they're about to go do. Again, I won't say what they're about to go do. This video is only the first part, but. There's like, how do you get them to go to the next thing? And they're like, they aren't doing the next thing. So it's like <laughs> the players even talked about like, oh yeah, well this is already off the rails and they're all over the place, right? So these wisdom saving throws, and as she says, are to have them think of something or remember something. Weird. Well, maybe eight. it's just a headache. Another eight? Another eight. Tight, tight to tight. <laughs> all this plot I don't get to give you. <laughs> ah, I know. Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> now, Dorian, as you're also kind of thinking back and trying to piece together the missing week that you all share. Hmm. You're missing someone. And you have that thought for an instant and then it goes away and it all kind of resolves back into the fog of not knowing. <sighs> uh. 
and now the players are kind of stuck they don't really know where to go and this is kind of a, a problem that happens all the time in dungeons and dragons tables everywhere this is the first session so of course this is a, 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 a difficult thing to have happen the players are having fun doing whatever they're doing and then things kind of die off but like where's the direction where are they going to go that's a hard that's a hard problem that's a, that's a hard thing to have happen so now how do you get out of it there's gonna be a player solution here that matt offers and then a D dungeon master solution that abria offers here we go should we look for contracts <laughs> for adventure <laughs> contract <laughs> 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 great player option right there because they, they feel like what how do we get to go and this is something you should do as players tips for players you should try and go to find the things that your dungeon master has for you don't don't just run off and dump off the deep end you know obviously you want to do what you want to do and what the group wants to do and stuff but like you know have some empathy for the dungeon master to try and be like how do we where do we go to try and do something so props to a brand new player trying to put us back on track to get towards the next thing. So props to you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Darius, you were going to show us a trick. Oh you? yeah, show us a trick. <laughs> right, all right. And look at that, the, another new player. Another, oh, right there. Another brand new player. Both of the new players trying to get things back on track and get things and get get things moving back again down the path of the story of whatever's about to happen, who knows? Um, so didn't you have something for, great, awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, uh, Robbie is a great team player across the board with all these different things, lots of different stuff that he does, but we can dive into that later. Right, so let's uh, look for, a, make sure we have a little open space here. Step back a little bit, if oh, you don't mind. Give it to Matt. A circle here. <laughs> Would this be better outside or mm. we're good? Uh, you know what? Let's let's pick a road intersection. Vern, yes. pick a road intersection. This is where this works best. Pick a road and. So right now, what I feel like Matt's doing is there's like they don't really know where to go, and he's gonna he's gonna have some. I think he has a compass. Maybe it's a. I don't know if this is part of his. Uh, always know where it's north, and he's turned it into an item or something. Uh, I don't know the the specifics mechanically on his character sheet of what he has to do this thing. I think it might be the the background feature or whatever. But uh, they always know what's north, and he has an item that he's expressing that through, which is also a really cool thing to do. Is taking part of your character features or class features or background features, whatever, and explaining them through a magic item. This is really cool to be able to spin that around. But um, he's trying to get a direction to go in that direction. And this is a great player solution that had two new players send it to Matt to be able to do this thing. And then now you could take and run with it. Let's see what happens. Intersection. Yeah, yeah, just point us to one. Um, let's do that one. Hey. Oh, this is like a perfect intersection. Let's go, come on. Okay. He kind of bounds over. All right. <clears throat> Attaches the chain from the compass rose. Sets it on the ground, puts his hand over it for a second. Spins it. It slows and slows and slows until it comes to a stop. Kind of to the left is where the point on the compass, where the north is, and he goes, we go that way. Nice. <laughs> That's the trick? Yeah. Is that a compass? Yeah, well, it's more of a decoration, but. Now, cool. The player has just now presented the Dungeon Master, but still, uh, how are we going to get this thing? How are you going to get the players to the next part? They're now heading north in some random direction. Can you take the thing that you are going to have them have and move it to that spot? You know, there's some sort of trigger that Abri is needing to have happen in this in this scenario that all of us Dungeon Masters have been in before. Just go to the play. Oh my gosh, you know, so um, can you move that thing and put it in front of this way that they're going now so that we can keep things going and the players are still in charge of how they're choosing to unlock the part of the story? Let's see. It's just like throwing a dart at a map and picking a place to go. We can do that too. That's up fine. To you. I mean, this always worked for me. So or it pointed that way and we're going that way? Unless you got a better idea. Hasn't steered me wrong this far. Do we have a better idea? Mm -mm. <laughs> there uh, really isn't much. Orm and Opal, idea. can you make perception checks for me? He seemed the most nonplussed by this trick. <laughs> so now here's the dungeon master stepping in to see where they can go. Maybe the thing that, that she has planned is not able to be put in front of Matt Mercer's north uh, direction thing here. Uh, so now they ask for two perception checks. See what happens. <laughs> Perception, you say? Yeah. 21. Ooh. 12. You're kind of lost in it. And as you're interacting with this, Oram, your attention is taken as you see a person standing 
strangely in front of your townhouse, just around the corner. Someone we've seen before or somebody new? From here, you don't recognize them. So there you go. As a dungeon master, if you ask for enough checks with different things, you know, have it be explaining the story and in between checks, it kind of progresses and cool stuff happens. But eventually someone's going to roll high. Eventually someone's going to roll high enough and bail you out of the thing that's going on. Maybe those wisdom saving throws that Ashley and Robbie had, maybe if they rolled high enough, they would have remembered something that caused them to be able to go to the next part. So every time you need to give your players multiple opportunities, especially if this, if, if the, the story has stopped because you have to, it's behind these low rolls that they keep happening. Like we talked about a second ago with perception checks and investigation checks, stopping the story from moving forward. Um, keep asking your players for different roles of the different stuff they're doing. In this case, the dungeon master swept in, asked for two perception checks, which to bail out of this situation that's going on. Cool. We got it over a 20. Oh my gosh. You, you noticed something, but, and then you go right into it. Great. So now Abri has described what Liam just saw, this sketchy figure, and they're all kind of whispering and talking about it. And then this happens. All right. I trust you. Okay. Also, this conversation is definitely happening long enough if like any of you want to. That's the hook. It. Sure. I'm Go already get it. walking down the road. Oh, God. Like, yeah. I'm part way away now. <laughs> I love the commitment to the thing that they were doing, right? They had this thing that they were going for, and instead of being like, oh, and they're just completely dropping it and going on to the story, because then that feels a little like, oh, here we go, we have to go this way. I love that, you know, I, Matt's intentions 100% is not to just screw over the DM or whatever story is happening and try like, no, I'm going north for no reason, you know what I mean? Obviously, this is where they need to go, but it feels a lot better to be able to just stay genuine and stay true to your character that, no, I'm going to keep going up north, and then, because Matt chose to do that, instead of just sweeping onto the group and passing on through it, Robbie comes in. What are you whispering about? Somebody's fucking with the uh, the townhouse. Okay, tell her, tell her, and I'm gonna run after Terry. <laughs> Terry X. What? Terry X. Oh, come back, come back, come back, come back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about something important. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. And I'm gonna put put my arm around him, and he's so and surprisingly guy. dense. I'm gonna try. To <laughs> try to kind of like pull them and I realize and then a cool moment happens with the rest of the with the rest of the group so this is the 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 big picture props to the two new players being able to try and like like nudge the group towards like hey can we didn't you have or can we go find and all those types of things great props to the players I don't even know if they realize they're they're purposely doing that but that's so amazing and that shows how you don't have to be a super experienced dungeon, uh, dungeon. you don't have to be a super experienced player to be able to do these things that, that, that play together this game that everyone kind of understands that even at the core level then you had another player create a cool idea this whole go north direction and then this is where it little mini, mini time out here is could that person could that thing of where they're heading towards on the way down they start moving down towards the north you see a suspicious figure and, da, 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 and then maybe that happens there i don't know i don't know if you could have done that maybe there's a lot more that goes on and um this is no spoilers here but it was very important to have this whole thing happen at their cottage huh that's all i'm going to say with that so maybe the north option wasn't a possibility and it would have been really risky to have them go north and then they see a figure and it runs towards their house or something and then it could have gone a lot different so then now the dungeon master as the third layer here steps in with a perception check to see who's going to be able to do something if not maybe they had to keep going and then something else would have had to happen and then you have a bunch of different layers of defense here to be able to try and get to this part where the players can engage with the thing that you have for them this is really the big coaching point that i would say for everybody is have players lead towards the right direction try and come up with things that we can do whether it's poking the party in the right direction to having some big description of sending people in some sort of direction to kind of get the ball rolling keep making checks to try and get someone to get a high enough roll as the dungeon master maybe has to ask for those themselves as well to finally have something happen to be able to go after right sometimes you just get a whole bunch of low low rolls in a row and then something has to happen and also i hope you've seen a really cool way that i've never seen before i've done plenty of different times where I start a different player off and they each have their own little things that they do and then they we dive into it from there like their own little scenes but this was a really cool gray area between the groups about to be together but what does she say where are you right and it gives a very open description 
of what they can do and it's really cool to see that and then each of the players doing their own individual things and they all come together it's really cool but do you think it's really cool i'm stopping up to this point i don't want to get too far into the episodes if you want to see part two to this let me know below i'm going to be basing this entirely off the comments if this if this series lives or dies uh in the exandria i keep doing these updates along with critical role if you want to see the entire episodes all in one um or whatever you want to see this thing comes because i think there's so many things we can learn from especially the top of the top players the, the people that have played this thing on the biggest stages that have had the most experienced dungeon master where there's so much to learn from all of these things and see how next level dungeon masters and next level players make adjustments and interact with each other alongside brand new players it's absolutely beautiful that's why i've chosen exandria unlimited uh, for multiple reasons but let me know i think all the different characters and the different team that is established here is super awesome uh already taking a cool bunch of cool notes from maria the two new players are diving into robbie and amy are diving into their new characters i think they're doing a great job it is so cool to see matt mercer as an actual player and some of the descriptions if and if y'all want to see the part two to this some of the stuff that happens in, in combat the mm, i don't want to get into it but super awesome uh love liam love ashley i think the whole team and all the different characters are playing liam's playing a fighter and everybody else is a spellcaster i love that he's the, the no more caleb uh super wizard spell guy now he's just a fighter and it's really cool to see some of the stuff that goes down so if you like the series let me know comment down below share it around like it and stuff uh, i hope uh that this is my first critical role specific uh, uh video so hopefully critical uh, welcome critters <laughs> uh and uh let's see what happens i'm out i haven't posted a video since i started my kickstarter but oh my god my kickstarter is going on right now and it is i'm 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 speechless literally i can't even think of what to say i have i am blown away from the response i had we got funded in five minutes it was just literally just racking up and now we're unlocking stretch goals left and right we're already three stretch goals in and it's it been just about a day at this point so uh thank you so much for the support alcana's almanac of all things is an expansion to fifth edition it takes all these things kind of like the spirit of what i'm trying to talk about here there's so many different ways to play this game so many and they're all beautiful and they're all cool and there's so many different things we can learn from and do with each other and make little tweaks and changes and learn from all the stuff we do whether it's rules or whether it's playing the game so alcanter's almanac is an expansion with it gives you a whole bunch of rules that you can customize and pick and choose so not only an example for the travel system i have five different travel systems that you can choose which one you like you can use all of them and each one of them has little rules that you can customize and tweak around to fit your table so i guarantee you there's going to be something in there that helps you because even just for travel maybe you like this method and that's the only way you do it or maybe whenever you're traveling through dangerous places you choose this method so these are your two favorite whatever you want to do so many different options so many different customizable things check it out link down in the description i appreciate you guys and that's it so as always stay creative and think outside the box peace